I'm Coralie Wynn and I oversee Gap Filler day to day. What Gap Filler is, uh, is really about testing new ideas and being the one that in, the organisation is going to try new stuff. It's called DIY urbanism or pop-up city or whatever, there's different words for it. And the name Gap Filler sort of implies just sort of treading water until we get back to normal, like just, you know, stop gap measure. And we reflect on that and go, well, that's actually not what we think we do. We actually think what we're doing is a kind of urban design process, testing out what works and what doesn't, what people want in the city and what they don't. If you think of it as a laboratory, I know like the dancer mat's a good example of testing out, you know, will people dance in public if you give them a space to do that? And it's proved that yes, they will. And then other cities around New Zealand have been looking at the dancer mat. They might buy one or they might create a space in their city where people can dance in public. By getting permission to use a private landowner's piece of land where they'd had a building demolished and they might have hosted a dance and film event. What they're doing in their action is turning private land into public space. And I kept thinking how important that was when the cordon locked us off from the primary public spaces of our city. Yeah, where um, we get together. Where we get together. And the work of Gap Filler is creating public space and reasons for people to come together. It's a powerful thing. So it's actually very low risk and if it's not liked, or if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter that much. But we've tested something, and we've got something, and we've actually got a sense of progress and positivity and hope, and oh, we could do that, you know? These projects aren't meant to endure for a long time. They're just meant to be around for a short time. I think people are drawn to the one-offness and the resourcefulness of them. And the fact that Christchurch has just so much of that activity in one place, and a sense of possibility, makes it quite a unique place to visit. Any marvellous city like Barcelona or Berlin, or, you know, these vibrant, thriving metropolises, they, they do have this written into how they operate. It, it's actually getting a lot of attention and so on internationally as well, which I think is also really important that the world can actually learn from, from what's happening in here and, and look at grassroots urbanism, which this is very much about. You know, this is a bunch of quite passionate and motivated people going, what, what can we do to help shape this into a place that we, we want to be in? The New York Times rating of Christchurch and the Lonely Planet one are massively powerful. In terms of creating perception of the city, they're worth their weight in gold. And it's so important for Christchurch to be seen as a place where people can come and test out new ideas. It's really important to me that that element of this transition activity is understood, that it is totally like incubating incubating things that are going to go on and have other iterations. And the New York Times and Lonely Planet just amplify that to the max. It, it is so important for how a city is perceived in terms of its like cool factor or unique factor. And it's an exciting um, but challenging role, I think, that we have in the city. <laughs>